Okay. So this morning's yoga class is going to begin with relaxation. Please find yourself laying back on your mat, getting comfortable, not stressing too much about what you look like in your relaxation pose. For most of us, this will be Shavasana. And Shavasana is laying on our back with our palms facing up towards the ceiling. Our legs are straight and we're trying to get rid of any fidgeting. We're noticing anything going on in our environment. So the room that we're practicing our yoga in. And we can either take this time to turn it off or acknowledge that it's there and accept any of these sounds or friends that may be helping us through our practice today. As we continue to lay down on our yoga mat, I want you to notice your shoulders relaxing into the ground. I want you to try to soften the facial features. So maybe you've got your, your eyes really tight or maybe you're looking all over the place with your eyeballs. Try to just relax your eyes, relax your mouth, breathing in and out through our nose, trying to stay nice and calm, soft through the neck. You can even have your hands on your belly if you'd prefer to feel the belly rise up as we breathe in and then fall down as we breathe out. Sometimes that helps to actually feel the belly move. And as we continue to breathe, I want you to notice how this helps us feel more relaxed. We can calm down, let go, tune out. Taking a couple more nice big breaths. And on our next inhale, I'll ask all of us to take our arms all the way up above our head. You can interlace the fingers if that feels good. Really reach. Some of our arms may touch the floor. Some of them might not, that's okay. We're gonna notice any stretch happening through the shoulders. You can hold that for a couple of breaths. Now slowly, let's release those arms all the way down. And as we do that, we're going to now bring our knees into our chest and give ourselves that fantastic hug. Rocking right to left, side to side. You may be feeling a lot of sensation in through your hips. There could be a a bit of a pinching sensation, or you might be feeling a stretch through your back as you rock right to left. Notice what you're feeling. That's important to check in. And as we continue to hug the knees into the body, let's roll our ankles. Working out any cricks or cracks. Good. We're going to stretch one leg at a time. Hug your right knee and press your left leg all the way down to the ground. Now, as we continue to hug that right knee, let's open out towards your right shoulder just a little bit. So you might stretch through the inside of your right leg a bit more, keeping both hips and both shoulders flat on the floor. We'll bring the knee into the middle and over towards your left shoulder. Still hug that thigh in nice and tight to your belly. Maybe you feel a stretch somewhere different now in your hip, maybe more on the outside. come through the middle and lower all the way down. We'll bring that left knee in, open the leg out towards our left shoulder. Notice how that feels. Again, I want you to be soft through the face, level through your hips and shoulders so we're not twisting. Then we bring the knee across towards that right shoulder, still drawing the knee in towards the belly. and then we'll release that all the way down. 
Slowly bringing our feet flat onto the floor, we'll draw them in nice and close, preparing for glute bridges. Double check that your legs aren't open wide and they're not collapsed in. We want the knees pointing straight up to the ceiling. Knees are always stacked on ankles. Arms down by our sides. We'll lift our hips all the way up towards the ceiling and then slowly lower down, working through your back. Inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, slowly lower, like a big back massage. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower down. Two more. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower down. And one more. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower down. Now slowly coming through baby pose on our side. Let's press all the way up. We're going to take hands and knees in tabletop. Right and left hand underneath respective shoulders. Spread out your fingers. We have our knees flat on the floor and really pull those bellies in, creating a flat tabletop back. Finding spinal balance, we reach right arm forward, left leg back, nice and straight, and lower down. Finding our balance this morning. Inhale, left. Exhale, lower. Inhale, right. Exhale. Inhale, left. Exhale, one more each side. Inhale, right. Exhale, down. Inhale, left. Exhale, holding your table, taking our thread the needle. We'll bring our right arm all the way up to the sky. Thread it all the way underneath and try to lay into that right ear. So you're on your shoulder, you're on your ear. We can take that left hand and either reach it forward or reach it all the way up to the ceiling. Notice how that feels on our shoulders, through our back, nice twist. When we slowly bring that left hand down to the floor, we can bring both hands onto the ground and do the other side. Inhale, left arm all the way up nice and high. Big stretch, open the chest, and then exhale, thread underneath. And as we lay in that left ear, we can reach that right hand all the way up to the ceiling. Or again, the option is to reach it forward. Couple more breaths. Now slowly release that hand down, coming through tabletop and we'll hold this. So make sure you're happy on your hands and knees, coming into our cats and cows. Inhale, let's look forward. Now exhale, tuck the tailbone, round the back. Inhale, open. Exhale, round. Inhale, open. Exhale, round. One more. Inhale, open. Exhale, round. Really nice and high. Bring the belly in, tuck the chin, and then press back into child's pose. Extend those arms forward and relax the head. When we're in child's pose, some of us may actually have our forehead touching the floor. If you're able to do that, allow your head to rest on the ground. We'll hold this for just two more breaths. Good, right, now we're going to come back up into tabletop position. So if all of us can work our way back up into tabletop, I'll face you so that we can do this together. Coming into gate pose. Gate, like your back fence, we'll take our right leg out to the side and you'll have your foot flat on the floor. See how my toes are pointing forward and my foot's flat? You can curl your back toes underneath of you. And then we're going to lift ourselves all the way up. Make sure that you're not off balance here, right on top of that knee. Hopefully that feels okay today. Taking our left hand, we're going to reach up to the ceiling. This right hand is reaching towards your foot. We're gonna really lift up. Make sure the shoulder isn't crowding your face. Keep the shoulder pulled down and the chest open so you're facing completely forward, hips and shoulders. Big stretch down the side. 
And now we're going to flow this. Inhale, lift up to the middle. Exhale, try to come down to the other side. Inhale, lift up to the middle. Exhale, other way. Again, inhale, middle, make that T. Exhale, touch down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, we'll do that one more each way. Inhale, middle, T. Exhale. And last time, really nice balance. Inhale. Exhale, down. Coming through the middle. Slowly release your hands, take your time. And now from here, we're going to add in that stretch. So you may need to adjust as you come back a little bit and then reach your arms forward. So the point is to stretch through this whole inside of that right leg. Now I've got my foot still on the floor, toe pointing forward. You might wanna lift it up if that feels better. We really have to play with this to find out what works best for you today. Slow, deep breathing. Wanna let your body really slow down and relax. Now we'll slowly come back up into tabletop. Ooh, there's a lot of feelings, isn't there? And we can press back into child's pose for a moment and let your forehead drop down again. Slowly coming back up into tabletop. If anyone noticed that your knee bothered you on that exercise, you can always roll your mat up a couple of times to add extra cushioning, or you can use a, a very thin pillow or something. As we take our left leg out, you'll notice if you need anything extra for that right knee. Most of the time we're okay though. That foot is flat. You may feel a stretch through the inside of the thigh. I want you to be careful as we slowly walk ourselves up, find our balance, hips stacked right on top of bottom right knee, arms are out in T. Okay, once we have our balance, really engage the core. Let's reach the right hand up nice and high to the ceiling. And that left hand is not gripping this bottom leg, but just reaching down the leg. This is open and see how I'm making a straight line from knee, hip, shoulder, hand. I'm connecting the dots all in one straight line. Now we're going to flow it. So we inhale through T, exhale, reach that left hand high. Inhale up. Exhale. Inhale through T. Exhale, reach left hand up. Inhale, lift, make the letter T. Exhale, reach right hand. One more each side, inhale. Exhale, reach that left hand nice and high. And inhale, lift, last time. Exhale, reach the right hand high. Inhale, lift up, find that letter T. Now with our balance, we slowly reach our hands down. You can curl that back toe if you haven't already and then sit your hips back. Some of us sit back a lot, some of us only sit a little. And then while you're here, feel free to reach forward a little bit more, nice flat back, maybe that left toe pops up. Noticing where you're feeling it in the inside of that left leg. Depending what we've gotten up to this week, especially the last couple of days, this could be quite intense. So again, using that slow exhale. And then we'll reach ourselves back up through tabletop and come all the way back into child's pose. This time incorporating a shoulder stretch in our child's position. We'll walk our hands over to the right side of our mat, left hand on top, and we pull back into that left hip. Coming through the middle, walk over to the left side, pull back into that right hip. coming through the middle. Now coming up into tabletop position for our runner's lunge. Strong position here as we bring right foot all the way up between our hands. However many wiggles or steps you need to take, 
Again, we always stack knee on top of ankle. Make sure you can wiggle those toes throughout the stretch. Some of us may choose to keep our hands down on the floor today. Otherwise, if you're able to, I'll ask that we bring our hand up onto the thigh. Pull, so I'm trying to lift my shirt. I'm wearing black on black on black, so I apologize if you can't see this too well. Pull your bellies in, and then I want you to lean forward just a little bit into that right knee. So if we let our bellies kind of fall out and let our backs arch, we're not getting as good a stretch as we could. So we want to pull the belly in and you'll feel the hip flexor come up with the belly. And then, ooh, there it is. That, that was what I needed to do. So we wiggle those toes. And then if you can, let's reach those arms up, shoulders down. Other option for arms is heart center. Holding your hands in prayer right at your heart. Stay where you are. I'm just gonna face forward so you can see that again. Now from here, we're going to add another twist. So we'll take both hands down. Left hand stays on the floor beside the right foot. And we lift that right arm all the way up to the ceiling, stretching through the pecs and the chest. Now, if that bothers anyone's shoulder too much, you can take that hand into the back pocket. So just bring it behind you. Keep that knee right on top of your ankle, full flat foot. and then slowly release the hands down. Try to keep your hands on the floor as we push our hips back. Your knee might be a little straight into this hamstring stretch. Walk your hands back, and then if it's still too intense, that's when you're gonna come up and you can rest on your hips. You can rest on your left thigh, or if anyone had yoga blocks at home, you could rest on those yoga blocks. So as we stretch the back of your right leg, I want you to attempt for a flat back. That always makes our stretch a little bit more effective if we can have a straight back. I know the balance can be a little bit tricky with this one. And we're working on taking just two more slow breaths. All right, carefully take our time. We can bend back into that right knee slowly sweep the leg behind us and we'll move our left foot forward instead you may need to help that foot get there there might be a couple wiggles knee right on top of ankle and then if you're able to lift your hands up today we'll take our hands right up onto our thigh now notice if you're kind of twisty try to keep again our hips level so if you had that contractor's ruler with the yellow bubble in the middle it would be level same with your shoulders. And then we'll bend forward a little bit, keeping that belly pulled in. That's gonna help us stay really tall and straight. Shoulders stay down. Now from here, as we're working on stretching through that right hip flexor, I want you to notice that your left toes are loose. We're not gripping the floor. And that you're wearing a crown on top of your head really proudly. So imagine, if my bun's high enough, my bun is my crown now. If I were to dip it, it would fall off. So keep it held high, always proud. Now while we're here, we're going to stretch through the side body a bit more, finding that twisted lunge. So we'll bring our hands down. Right hand stays beside the left foot and then big reach. Now I want you to look at my arms and then think of your own. See how I'm drawing a straight line from wrist elbow, shoulder, shoulder, elbow, wrist. Great line. That's our spatial awareness. We know where our body is. Every part of our body is accounted for. We are in control. Good, slowly release that down. Both hands are on the floor to start, coming into that hamstring stretch. We rock our hips back, peel our toe up. This front knee can be a little bit bent, but now when we're getting here, we may need to come up higher so that we can square the shoulders and flatten out our back. Remember in yoga, everybody looks different and every single time we practice yoga, our body might be a little bit different. So what we did yesterday may not be true for today. 
I want you to pay attention to how this feels and take two more breaths. Slowly rock forward into that leg, sweep the knee back, and let's all rest back in child's pose again. Couple slow, deep breaths, trying to get those hips really nice and low. When you're ready, and if you're able to, we'll come up into downward facing dog. Curl the toes, lift the hips. Now let's pedal the feet and walk the dog. Try to press those heels one at a time down to the floor, stretching through those calf muscles, and then press both feet down. The feet are about hips with distance apart, maybe smaller. So I usually imagine that with my two feet that I have, if I had three feet, there's just enough space for that third foot to come in between the two, if that makes sense. You can also think of a, a running shoe maybe being between your two feet. Now, as we look forward between your hands, I want everyone to take a big inhale and come into plank. We can take our knees down to the ground. And now we're going to exhale, chaturanga, that slow control, the lower. Inhale, scoop ourselves up for cobra. Now tall through your crown. Curl your toes, exhale, press back into downward dog or child pose. We'll do that one more time. Inhale, forward into plank. Knees down. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, press back, down dog or child's pose. Now from here, we're going to come back into tabletop so that we can sweep our legs around and bring them all the way in front of us. At this point, if anyone needed a drink, this would be a really good time to grab that quick water break. If you needed to take any adjustments, um, if you're feeling warm, feel free to take a sweater or your socks off because we're going to come into a couple of slow holds. We don't always do slow holds because I usually do vinyasa yoga, which is flow yoga. Now we're going to switch gears and do what's called yin yoga. So yin is holding the pose. It's much more restorative, which means um, we're going to kind of set our body back to factory settings. If you're thinking about um, technology, right? We're gonna press the reset button. So what I want us to do first is take our legs into a crisscross applesauce position, but not really. This is an IT band stretch. So you're going to take almost crisscross, bringing your right foot ahead of your left foot. If you've done yoga with me for a while, likely you've done this before but if you're new don't worry about it it may be a little confusing today we'll catch on so crisscross but you're not actually crossing your feet you're going to have your right foot in front of your left foot and we'll do both sides so with your right foot in front of your left foot knees are happy you're okay with this position both sides of our bum are on the ground i want us to take our hands on the floor in front of us and go for a walk Keep your bum on the ground, keep both knees pressing down, and then hold it. Good, and if you're able to relax your head, I'll ask us to just drop that head low. And you may be feeling a lot of stretch in that right hip with our right foot being forward. That's where we should be feeling this. Now, while we're here, I'll ask that we walk our hands over to the right. Keep both hips on the floor, both hands on the floor, and then sit back into that left hip just a little bit more. Some of us will feel a lot. Some of us will feel a little. Remember, this is all about how you experience it right now. So just stay nice and slow. Keep focusing on your breathing. Come all the way through the middle and we'll walk over to our left side. 
Ooh, this is where I'm really feeling it. So both hands on the ground, both hips on the ground, and kind of pull away from that right hand back into that right hip. Try to just relax your head. Slow, deep breath. walking through the middle. Maybe walk just a little bit further forward for two more slow breaths. And then slowly walk in. Okay. Take your hands behind us. Bring those legs oh, up and as wide as your mat or as wide as your legs and then windshield wiper them right to left getting out any of those little twisting kinks. Preparing to do that with the left foot in front. So now we'll slowly start to sit up again, getting into that crisscross position. So now I've got my right foot close to my body, my left foot out. And then I wanna make sure that I'm really trying to keep both sides of my hips on the ground and that it doesn't have to be a cross position. Your knees don't have to be super bent. You can have your legs quite far in front of you if that feels better. We'll take both hands in front of our legs when we're ready and go for that walk. So press that left knee down, both hips down, walking forward, and then try to drop your head, keeping your bum down on the floor. And I want us to check in with our breathing is a nice shoulder stretch while we're focusing on that left hip. Now while we're here, we're going to walk our hands over to the left, pull into that right hip. Slowly walk through the middle. I'm really feeling this in my side body right now, right past my shoulders. Pulling from the right, sitting back into that left hip. Keep both sides of the bum on the ground. You might be feeling this in your back. And from this Easy seated pose with reach. We're going to walk into the middle and walk out for just two more breaths, holding that IT band, which is the tight spot down the outside of your thigh, connecting hip to knee. And we'll slowly walk in, walking our hands all the way back behind us taking our feet up onto the floor. And, oh, I just had some cricks and cracks there. Nice little pops. We'll work our legs right to left, windshield wipers. Now slowly, let's sit up nice and tall. We'll bring our legs out into a straddle position. Your straddle can be as narrow as the smallest part of your yoga mat, or it can be as wide as the longest part of your yoga mat. It really doesn't matter so long as we're keeping our hips on the floor and our heels can stay on the floor. So that's gonna tell you where you need to go. A little bit of a knee bend is okay. Straighter is what we're working towards. So while we're here, I'll ask that we put our hands right in forward and then we're walking. And we'll come into now a forward fold in our straddle split. Again, you're gonna try to push your bum back down into the ground, keep your heels on the ground, toes to the ceiling, and then you can relax your head maybe in your fists, or you can stay up nice and high on your hands if that's better. But we're targeting the inside of your thighs into your hips, and maybe getting a little bit through the hamstrings behind the knees. And just like we did in our easy seated pose, we're going to be walking to either leg. So now what I'll have us do is take our hands and slowly walk them towards your right foot. 
So whether your hands are up nice and close to your hips, closer to your knee or your foot, I want you to try to bring your hands on either side of your leg. So on the outside and inside. Hips are on the floor, both heels are on the ground. And then when you're here, you're gonna try to reach your nose towards your leg and hold this stretch. I know it can be hard sometimes holding a pose for a long time. Just focus on how it feels. Take a few big breaths. Try to stay concentrating on the task at hand. And we'll slowly walk our hands back in towards our hips. Walk through the middle, over towards the left leg. Hands come on either side. Again, just double check that your hips are flat, your feet are pointing up to the ceiling, and then we'll walk forward. And then drop that nose down. Now walk your hands into the middle and we're going to sit up really nice and tall. Keep your legs where they are, reaching our arms out into T. Remember gate pose? We'll take the same side stretch, bringing the right knuckles to the inside of that right leg. Now lift that left hand all the way up to the ceiling. Keep your hips on the floor. Keep that left shoulder opening up. Know where your left hand's reaching. Again, if it's bugging you, you can take it to your hip or back pocket but I want us to feel the stretch through the legs and down that side. Couple more breaths. Big inhale, lift up through middle. Find that T position. Now take the left knuckles to the inside of the left leg. Flip that right hand all the way up. Both hips press down, reach that right shoulder back and tall. In yoga, we always are looking for more space. Try to keep reaching that right arm nice and tall. Big deep breath. This will feel really good. We'll feel taller after doing this exercise. Big inhale. And relax. Oh, and shake it out. Oh my goodness, shake out those legs. From here, I'll ask that we all return into our Shavasana position laying on our back. And this is going to be our very last stretch. You can roll yourself down, giving yourself a nice big hug. Coming into our spinal twist to finish. We'll bring our legs down to the floor. Arms come out into that T position one last time. Inhale, lift our right knee up 90 degrees. Exhale, lower to the left. And now we can look over that right arm, trying to keep both shoulders pressing down into the floor. If you've been doing a lot of chest this week, you may notice a stretch through that right shoulder. Or if you've been sitting a lot, maybe you notice a stretch through the right side of your back. Inhale, lifting the knee up. Exhale, lower down. If you feel like you've wiggled, go ahead and wiggle back into a good straight line. We lift our left leg up, big inhale. Now exhale, lower to the right. And now try to get both shoulders down on the ground and you can look over that left arm as we stretch down the whole left side of our body. Now inhale, lift the knee up. Exhale, lower down. If anyone needs to, you might want a windshield way for your knees or maybe you give yourself a big hug. We are going to be coming into our final relaxation. So we'll ask now that we bring our legs into that position, whether it's straight or bent, sometimes butterfly is also a nice restorative pose. Arms can be on our belly or out to the side with palms facing up to the ceiling. 
Try to take your head away from being left or right and instead being flat with your nose pointing straight up to the ceiling. And now just relax. Let everything go. Let go of your abdominal muscles, your belly. Let go of any tension in your jaw, your eyes, even in your fingers and toes. Maybe just wiggle and shake those out. Bringing ourselves into a relaxed state. And we're going to stay here for a couple of minutes. Nice deep breaths. Now, as we continue to lay down, if your eyes are open, I'll ask if you can close them. And I want you to start counting your breathing. So we'll breathe together for the counts of five. Inhale, five four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Again, inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one more time together. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Keep breathing at your own pace. And notice how you're feeling right now. Taking that body scan, from head to toes, checking in with all of the areas, the neck, the shoulders, even through our midsection, our, our belly, our back. Notice how your hips are feeling, even down into your knees and your ankles. We can start to roll through the wrists and ankles, wiggle those fingers and toes. If it feels good to bring your knees into your chest and kind of rock around, you can do that as well. Good, and slowly make your way up into that seated position. Take your time. Finding our easy seated pose when you're ready. Okay, and we're going to say our final goodbye. Sitting up so tall. We'll inhale, lift our hands up above head to prayer. Exhale, come down through heart center. Thank you, everybody. Namaste.